Hey, what's going on, everyone? It's Justin Dickmeyer with EngineerInTrainingExam.com, and in today's quick tutorial, we're going to talk about L'Hopital's rule. So, what is L'Hopital's rule? Well, let's consider the limit as x goes to a of f of x over g sub x. If at a both f of x and g sub x are finite and g sub a is not equal to zero, then the typical process of finding the limit would be plugging in a wherever we see x in those functions. So our limit would simply be f of a over g sub a. But what happens if both the numerator and the denominator tend to zero? It is not clear then what the limit would be. In fact, depending on what functions f of x and g sub x are, the limit can really be anything. So when we get when we approach functions or ask to find functions and uh, we get an indeterminate form of say 0 divided by 0 that's not really telling us much about a limit uh, for example let me show you a quick example here let's take the limit as x goes to 0 of x to the fourth divided by x to the third so if we were asked to find this limit we would first try to just plug in 0 for wherever we find x. And in this case, doing that would give us the indeterminate form of 0 over 0. So that's not telling us much about what the limit of that function is. So we need to use L'Hopital's rule to uh, do a couple steps to help us determine what the real limit of that function is. So let's take a look at the first indeterminate form of 0 divided by 0. So suppose that we have that same limit f of x over g sub x as x goes to a. And when we take the limit in our standard procedures, we find that both f of x and g sub x are going to be 0 divided by 0. So L'Hopital's rule, what it does is it gives us two, two rules here. Number one, if we can take the derivative of both f of x and g sub x, then the limit as x goes to a of f prime of x divided by g prime of x, if that exists and is some number l, then the limit of our original function f of x over g of x is also l. And number two, it tells us that if in on the other hand f prime of x divided by g prime of x if that tends to plus or minus infinity then our original function also tends to plus or minus infinity so let's take a quick look at an example here let's take the limit as x goes to 1 of 2 natural log of x divided by x minus 1. So what we try to do here first is just plug in 1 wherever we see x and we find real quickly that we would get the indeterminate form of 0 over 0. So what we need to do is employ L'Hopital's rule and the first thing we need to do is take the derivatives of both the numerator and the denominator and once that's complete all we need to do is plug that back into the limit and take the limit. So let's take the limit as x goes to 1 and take the derivatives of uh, both the numerator and the denominator and we get 2 divided by x divided by x oops sorry divided by 1. So plug in 1 wherever we see x and we find that the that the limit is going to be 2 and L'Hopital's rule <coughs> excuse me tells us that the limit of the original function is now 2. So what if we have a, the indeterminate form or another rather another indeterminate form we might encounter is infinity over infinity. So this isn't telling us much again about the limit. So uh, we have to employ L'Hopital's rule again and the r same rules apply. If we can find a limit at f prime of x g prime of x, if we can find this limit, then that's good. That's the limit of the original function. And in the same way, if we 
find that f prime of x g prime of x tends to plus or minus infinity, then uh, we know that our original function also will tend to plus or minus infinity. So let's take a look at an example here. Let's look at the example limit as x goes to infinity of e sub x divided by x. So our, our first shot here, we'll just plug in infinity into wherever we see x. And we'll see that we have an indeterminate form of infinity over infinity. So once again, not telling us much about the limit of the function. So what we need to do is take the derivatives of both the numerator and the denominator. And we will get limit as x goes to infinity of e sub x over 1. So now, plugging in infinity, we see that uh, the function will tend to plus infinity. So that tells us what our limit of the original function does. Sometimes, you know, we'll encounter equations in which we have to use L'Hopital's rule multiple times. Uh, what I mean by that is we'll, we'll be given a, a function. Um, say our function is 1 minus cosine of x divided by x squared. And we'll be asked to take that limit and let's say it approaches zero. So if we plug in zero here, uh, we'll find that, um, once again, we'll get the indeterminate form, zero over zero. So now that we've been through the process, we know that we need to take the derivative of both the numerator and the denominator using L'Hopital's rule to determine the limit. So what? So let's do that real quick. Let's take the limit as x goes to zero of the derivatives, and we'll see that uh, that's sine x divided by 2x. So usually right here we'll, we can find a limit. Usually it takes one step in uh, using L'Hopital's rule to find that limit. But in this instance uh, we plug in 0 and once again we get 0 divided by 0. So what do you do in this case? Um, it's, it's not very difficult. All you need to do is employ L'Hopital's rule again. Take the derivative of both functions and plug it back into the limit x goes to 0 of cosine of x divided by 2. And so now, in this case, we plug in 0, and we find that the limit is 1 half. And that's going to be the limit of our original function. So if you continue to hit indeterminate forms as you work your way through uh, L'Hopital's rule, uh, just continue to employ until you find that, uh, that definitive limit. So that's it for now, guys. Um, I appreciate you guys taking the time out to check out uh, this quick tutorial. Head on over to engineerandtrainingexam.com for more uh, resources as you prepare for the engineer and training exam. And uh, if you have any questions, just contact me through the site or here on YouTube. I appreciate it. Have a good day, guys.